Early, we're coming from the outdoors, and we've come a long ways from the old school backyard fire pit where we went out in the backyard and gathered some rocks together and put a stack of wood together and got our Boy Scout tools out and went and lit the fire, and we all stood around three quarters of it because the other quarter we were smoked out. And then we had to go clean that thing up, and it, well, if we got it started in the first place, but we eventually got our s'mores one way or the other. In the new backyard and the new outdoor living, we have fire that is simply amazing. We go everywhere from simple to spectacular. And some of these fire features are for gathering, and some of them are focal points, and some of them are both. So when we look at gathering, there's several things that we look at. A lot of times we're gathered around a, a central fire pit. This is a place to gather. And with gathering, we want plenty of places to sit. And sometimes we'll actually have a bench around a fire pit. Now I have a lot of clients that want to put a bench all the way around the fire pit. And I don't really recommend that in Texas very much. And the reason why is because it gets hot here three quarters of the year. And so we don't want to sit in a fixed seat. We want the flexibility to move back and forth. But having a bench on one side is not a bad situation. So long we've got patio areas on the other sides. And ideally, here in Texas, you want patio so you can sit around your fire pit and move your chairs back and forth seasonally in the wintertime close and the summertime far away. And that way, we have great place that we can hang out and eat s'mores and drink some wine and smoke cigars. You know, it's a great place for that. In some places, we'll have both a bench on one side and then seating on the other. And that makes a great setting. So from a style standpoint, we can have everything from really rustic to very modern and lots of features in between. Opposite of gathering, we're going to have a focal point. The first thing that a lot of times people do is they put fire in the primary view. And this is something that is generally going to be automated versus our gathering one. We're usually going to go out there and turn a gas key and light that feature because we're already out there not a big deal but a feature a lot of times is going to be enjoyed from inside the house when it's 37 degrees outside and raining and I don't want to go out there and light the fire pit but you know it'd be really cool to look at and how it reflects off the water at night and how it lights things up and that flames dancing at night is it's a really cool feature to look at and so we want that to be automated now one of the bonuses we get with automation is we have some wind and as it blows the fire a lot of times the fire feature can blow out and with automation what it does is immediately relights the feature and it does this for a number of times and then after a number of times of relighting it it's sensing that it's windy outside and maybe you shouldn't have a fire it turns off and then you have to, have to go out and restart that from your, well, typically today it's going to be from your cell phone because it's automated and you're just going to push a button and turn the thing on. So that's a cool thing about having automation is it gives you flexibility and also some safety factors uh, and the fact that if the wind blows it out, it's not continuing to pump gas out into the atmosphere. Uh, those are nice features to frame a view. A lot of times you may be flanking uh, something of significance. The other thing is you may be flanking like a vanishing edge feature and kind of anchoring the corners. But these focal points, you're going to sometimes not want to block a big view behind you. And so a fire feature that works really well in these aspects is a fire bowl. Now, the cool things about fire bowls is they come in different shapes. We've got squares, we've got cones, we've got rounds. We have different materials. We have copper, we have concrete, we have stainless steel. Also, there's different media that can go inside the fire bowls. Now, old school, we used to use some really big lava rock and it really was cool because it generated some heat. But the problem with it is when you get some moisture and it gets into that big lava rock and then it freezes and then it gets lit up and you have this steam creating uh, sometimes the fire rock to explode and that can land on things and melt stuff and light stuff on fire and we thought that wasn't very good from a safety standpoint so today we typically use a number of different media we use lava rock but it's typically tumbled now we also use uh, glass 
which glass comes in different textures and different sizes and different colors. And some people use one color and some people mix colors. Uh, also, there's there's cool, you can buy these spheres uh, that are look like cannonballs. Now, the other thing you can do, one thing about the media, one of the things we don't like to do, we, well, we prefer to use lava rock when we have propane because propane does not dissipate as easily. So we want something with big openings so that can dissipate in case we have something that blows out. So the other thing we can have is a combination of fire and water features. This is really cool because we can get the sound of water and fire. It also gives us something to look at really cool during the day and at night. Now, one thing to point out if you're combining fire and water is the higher the feature becomes above the pool, the more tapered the water feature is going into it. So sometimes because of that, we're going to actually put the fire on a column and have the water come out of the column and that way it doesn't taper as much. Now one thing we came up recently with is we actually put some fire in some columns, not on top of columns, but in the columns themselves, which is a really cool feature on this particular project. Went over really well. The other thing, sometimes we'll put fire out in boulders when we have a more organic look. So that's something that also can be done. You can also have a really cool focal point like with automated tiki torches. And there's manual tiki torches as well, but again, we're trying to make things easy. And so they don't take up a lot of space, but they add a really dramatic effect. Now, there are combination features that are both for gathering and are strong visuals. And the first of those would be a fireplace. A fireplace is a very strong architectural element, especially if it's freestanding. It can be very dramatic in its effect. But the other thing is a lot of times fireplaces are combined with structures such as an arbor or uh, also inside a cabana. So those can be some really strong features to look at. The other feature that it's a really strong combination gathering and visual is what we call line burner. Now we started using line burners about 10 years ago and initially we just use them for gathering around just like a fire pit and so that makes a really nice feature but then on sometimes we had some elevation changes and so we came in with some built-in seating and then we had the fire feature or we had fire behind a spa it was another common situation and then we actually started combining water walls and fire together, uh, which was a really cool feature that we could get both uh, something that looks nice and sounds nice together. So fire features in, in the applications that we're talking about, these aren't old school. We don't have to clean up after them. No ashes, no wood to haul in. They're not difficult to light and they minimize the smoke so everybody can gather around and enjoy the evening and enjoy each other because we've got an awesome backyard to be in. So if you don't have one yet, give us a call. We'll come create an awesome paradise in your backyard as well. So this is Mike Farley and hope you enjoyed this. If it was helpful, pass it on, give us a thumbs up and uh, we'll talk to you all sometime soon. Take care.